Howard, noted actress, and herself a fashion expert. I've just been watching Marlena Dietrich in a new picture. Her clothes are simply marvelous, Travis. Oh, I am so glad you like them. Did you see this white fringed one that she wears in the carnival sequence? Yes, and I was delighted to welcome fringes back again. There's nothing more flattering to a woman. I enjoyed using them, too, particularly as I didn't have to do it in the literal Spanish costume way, but could uh, use them inspirationally, you know? Well, you've certainly succeeded, Travis. I never saw Miss Dietrich look more beautiful. I don't see how Marlena kept that huge square comb in her hair, weighted down as it was by that waterfall of fringe. When she walked, the rhythm of the fringes from the tip of her comb to her slippers was exceedingly graceful. But I simply had to see more of Miss Dietrich, so I slipped back to the Devil is a Woman set and found her wearing the most romantic black costume. It was the one with a large velvet hat. Her black lace gloves made her hands even more graceful than ever. And such interesting pearl jewelry. I recognized the cape as the one for which you had the lace made right here in the studio, copied from a rare piece found among the heirlooms of one of our oldest Spanish families. There is little which you cannot do in Hollywood when it comes to achieving the effect you desire, is there? And no wonder the carnation fad has had an instantaneous acceptance. The clusters she wears in her hair are so indescribably flattering. How pretty the girls will look when they follow her example. The colouring of the peasant costume, with its lipstick red blouse and blue and white dotted skirt, is typical of so many Spanish paintings. The carnival costume which she wears when the hero first sees her is delightfully imaginative. The use of veiling and black chenille dots seems to supply exactly the right amount of excitement for that scene. When I saw Marlena wearing one of the little lace fascinators, it was like a promise fulfilled. From the moment you told me about them, I had hoped to see her haunting beauty enhanced by this simple but flattering fad. There's such a practical side to their use. At last, a way to keep one's hair in place in going to and from a party. Her coiffures in this picture are entrancing, especially the one where her hair is coiled into a low roll in the back of her neck and ornamented with another piece of that emerald and pearl jewellery you seem to design just as easily as the costumes. The shadows and sunlight of Spain were dramatized in that taffeta cape spangled in black and the huge taffeta hat. The lace veil was drama personified. All through the picture, the continued use of lace reminded me that this is the most typically luxurious material of the fastidious woman. Marlena reminded me of a great white peacock with its tail spread in that white lace gown with the enormous hat. She told me that the lace was a priceless heirloom which you had sacrilegiously cut to drape it flatly about her shoulders, avoiding that clumsy look which even lace can have if not handled skillfully. The wrist treatment of this gown intrigued me enormously, and I saw that the frills were made of layers of finely accordion-pleated satin used with the crepe side out. Here again I was reminded that you used carnations with every single costume, varying their color and placing. It isn't surprising that this Spanish theme has already had an international fashion influence, for there is so much that is flattering and adaptable about the costumes Miss Dietrich is wearing in The Devil is a Woman. I've enjoyed this preview of clothes tremendously, and I shall look forward to my next visit and more beautiful clothes.